12 steps to transcend to 5D, the most successful method for transcending human addiction to the three-dimensional hypnosis prison. Today we're going to be talking about step one, admitting we are powerless over 3D illusion. We are deciding to awaken from the dream of limitation. Hi, this is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard. This is the thunderwizard.com YouTube channel. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and make videos about each one of the 12 steps to transcending to the fifth dimension. Um, I made a live video about it yesterday. I ended up going off on a lot of tangents I didn't really want to go off on. So it helps me to stay on topic if I don't do live streams sometimes. So we're going to be talking about step one. I'm going to give you a brief understanding of why I am choosing to share this because the truth is I have been practicing the 12 steps and uh, specifically uh, focusing them on transitioning to the fifth dimension. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the 12 steps in my life have been the single most, and I can't stress that enough, the single most transformative spiritual and psychological process I've ever gone through. And I can say without any exaggeration, if it weren't for me working the 12 steps for the past 40 years, I would definitely be dead. No two ways about it. Um, well, you know, I am involved in an anonymous 12-step program, so I'm not going to tell you which program that is. And there are reasons for that. If you're in anonymous programs, you know why that is. Um, but I will definitely say that um, these 12 steps uh, I have found to be absolutely essential if what one wants to do is be able to achieve the impossible. For the anonymous programs, Alcoholics Anonymous, from where the 12 steps were originally created, um, Narcotics Anonymous, you know, and then you have Al-Anon, and then you have Codependence Anonymous, then you have Adult Children of Alcoholics, you have uh, anonymous 12-step programs for all kinds of addiction, and the reason why is because they work. And as I said in the first video, I won't go too deep into it, but 100 years ago, alcoholism was a disorder, it was a disease, it was an addiction that could not be overcome. If somebody was found to actually be physically addicted to alcohol 100 years ago, it was impossible for them to recover. And what used to happen is um, if somebody was found to be alcoholic, they would put them into loony bins. They would put them into straitjackets and they would spend the rest of their life in straitjackets in loony bins because they were incurable. And so this was the basis for Bill W. and Dr. Bob, who uh, are the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous. They took concepts from other um, programs before them that weren't very successful, and they found out the things that worked. And they did that for one very simple reason. Their lives were at stake. They knew if they didn't figure out a way to... to live with this condition and uh, stay sober, that they would die. And so um, when, you're at, when you've got that kind of pressure on you, you're willing to do whatever it takes, meaning you're willing to do things that are uncomfortable. And so this is why the 12 steps work really well with people who have hardcore life and death addictions like alcoholism, drug addiction. When it gets into things like gambling and sex and other things like that, then, um, it, you know, people are still under the gun, but not so much. When it comes to things like codependence, um, my experience is that, you know, unless they're really committed to their own uh, self-empowerment, you know, then it gets a little more challenging because people can, can, can still act out on all of their 
uh, their codependent addictions, but they don't feel like their life is at risk, even though it might actually be years down the road. So for me to introduce this as a way to escape uh, 5D, you've got to be pretty serious because my experience is most people just won't work the 12 steps unless they have to. And it's just because we are designed as human beings to not change unless our life depends on it. Now, we are, in fact, in a life and death transformation. The human race as we know it is going to go extinct, just like the Neanderthals before us. We are going to go extinct. And the only question is whether or not that will be as a result of an evolutionary shift into a higher dimensional um, form of the human race, or if we simply refuse to transcend, we refuse to uh, evolve beyond our current state, in which case the human race will simply just go extinct. It'll be the end of that experiment. So if you are aware, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've, I once worked in a chemical dependency hospital and I came to find out very quickly that, that the hospital programs are very good for one thing. They help people to dry out long enough uh, to maybe realize that they need to then work the steps. And so uh, at the final group, you know, I would be there and I would, you know, the, the people had been there for 40 days or whatever it was. And they're, they're thinking they're, they're ready to go out and live life. And they're expecting me to tell them, you've got all this knowledge. You can go out and do it. Go get them, Tiger. And I would say, you're screwed. And they would look at me like shocked. And I would say, because if after having been here for 40 days, you've dried out, if you don't realize that you are incapable of keeping yourself clean and sober, then what is going to happen is that you are going to go out there and you may die. So my suggestion to you is um, to get your ass to a meeting, get a sponsor, and work the steps. If what I've said has frightened you, good. Because if you are of the awareness that you are in fact screwed and it will be impossible for you with the tools that you have, to go out there and overcome your addiction, then you are sadly mistaken. So my suggestion to you is to, once you're out of here, first thing you need to do is if you've got a sponsor, call them. If not, get your ass to a meeting, get a sponsor, and get into those steps. Because when it comes to addiction, the thing about addiction is that the, the initial thought of addiction is people think, well, I just need to stop doing whatever it is that I'm doing, right? Like they believe they need to stop drinking or they need to stop using drugs or they need to stop, you know, uh, chasing after uh, dysfunctional people. And, as, and so they'll say, as long as I'm not doing that, I haven't had a drink, I haven't had a drug for X amount of years or months, then people who work the steps will say, well, so you're dry. And what I've seen happen, I've seen people who have been free of their addiction, meaning they haven't physically indulged in their addiction for decades. And then one day something snaps in them and they no longer have the ability to, uh, to resist and they will kill themselves. What the addiction hasn't stopped in them. It has progressed as though they've never stopped. So if there's somebody, let's say, that hasn't had alcohol for 40 years and they were on track to die within five years, their addiction has uh, progressed to that point. So the moment they go out and drink, many of them, they will be dead within hours. And I've personally known, I've seen this happen. I've seen it with my own eyes. So I know this is very real. So when it comes to the third dimension, however, you can't not be addicted. You can't stop being in 3D. So we need something 
that is beyond our three-dimensional toolbox to be able to give us the ability. And this first step, which is admitting we are powerless over the 3D illusion, is necessary. If you don't have that awareness, if you think you can think your way out of 3D, then you will basically be saying, I can use three-dimensional tools to get out of three-dimensional awareness. And that's insanity. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It's not possible. And so the reason why the 12 steps work is because they are a practical way for people to uh, shift their identity while simultaneously being empowered by higher dimensional forces. When it comes to addiction to alcohol and drugs, it's an impossibility for these people, you know, once they've gotten to a certain level of mental and psychological and physical addiction, it's literally impossible for them not to be free of that and then progress. What ends up happening is people stop, but they're still nuts. They're still crazy. And then eventually they end up using and drinking and dying again. Um, so what happens with the people who work the steps is they are actually, because of their absolute willingness to do whatever it takes to stay sober and become happy and become healthy, they are willing to tap into spiritual forces that then will come into them and will destroy their old identity and help them create a new one. Now, they don't realize that. So the people who have successfully overcome alcoholism addiction, and by the way, you never overcome it. So you mean talk about people who have recovered in the past tense. Those are usually people who are dry and they are in denial. Um, but people who are in a state of recovery where they're continuing to grow, they're continuing to heal, they continue to get happier, healthier, more prosperous, more loving, they, they totally, completely transform into completely different people. The only way that that can happen is by doing the spiritual work that the 12 steps point you towards, because the 12 steps are not a religion or a spiritual path, they just point you toward it. But the spiritual work that is done, when you work the steps, especially step one, when you realize you are powerless over the third dimension, that you are incapable within the third dimension to overcome the third dimension, when you realize that while living in the third dimension, your entire three-dimensional self is completely devoted to keeping you trapped in the third dimension because your three-dimensional self believes that your survival depends on it, the only way out of that will be a higher dimensional force that will come in and expand your identity beyond your 3D survival nervous system, brain, psyche, everything else. And so what I've come to realize is that people who successfully stay in a state of recovery, continuing recovery, working the steps, even if it's from alcohol or drugs or gambling or whatever it is, they've actually tapped into higher dimensional forces. They may not realize that. They may say, I have a relationship with God, or they may say, I have a relationship with a power greater than myself, whom I choose to call God or Jesus or Buddha or Rama or Krishna or Zeus or wh whoever their higher power is. That's why, you know, it's optional to pick your higher power because it doesn't matter. It's not about religion. It's about tapping into a force f greater than yourself, meaning greater than the third dimension. And when you look at Bill W., the guy who created um, the 12 steps, um, you find out that when he was... Uh, you know, when he was at his bottom and, and he um, was seeking to get uh, to get sober and he was, you know, he was in a state where he was at the at the moment he wasn't drinking, but and but he was desperate. He had a spiritual experience. 
And in that spiritual experience, a light appeared to him in a room. And then he had this shift of awareness and he had this moment of power. And it was that moment on that defined his ability to then come up with uh, the steps. And he did. He just sat and wrote them down because he wanted to write a book to get the information out. And he just wrote down the steps just right there in that moment. And what he may not have realized was that I have come to find out that light that appeared to him, he probably thought was God. I now strongly believe that the light that appeared to him was simply light from a higher dimension. And I believe that the being that was giving him this power and this understanding was what we would call a higher dimensional being. Very well could have been an extraterrestrial higher dimensional being. It could have been a non-physical higher dimensional being, but it wouldn't matter because in the fifth dimension, the in the fifth dimension, the vibration of addiction doesn't exist. You can't have it. It's impossible to be in that higher dimension and have the feelings and the impulses that that are on the same frequency as addiction. So addiction is the third dimension. The third dimension keeps us in the third dimension. And again, we identify with it. So our nervous system, our body and our brain literally need it to survive. And so when that has turned in on itself in the case of, you know, very serious three dimensional addiction, which is alcoholism or drug addiction. And again, the same thing is going on. People who are addicted to alcohol, drugs, sex, gambling, what's happening is that the nervous system has become attached to whatever it is, whether it's an ingested chemical or whether it's, you know, uh, chemicals that are released in the brain, let's say when you're gambling, the, the nervous system now has come to believe that that chemical is necessary for physical survival which is why they can intellectually know that, you know, I shouldn't be gambling. I shouldn't be, you know, watching porn 20 hours a day. I, I shouldn't be addicted to sex. I shouldn't be drinking. I shouldn't be smoking. I shouldn't be, you know, doing drugs. They, sh they, can, they can consciously know that, but they won't have the power to stop themselves because your brain isn't powerful enough to overcome the self-preservation mechanism within the nervous system. It's impossible. So the only way out of that, as you can get, is higher dimensional energy. And so in order to be willing to die, because what's happening, again, is people who work the steps are people who have a gun to their head. And they know if they don't work them, they're going to die. And they literally have to choose. Um, they literally have to choose between... Um, I'm going to feel good for another hour and it might kill me. Or I'm going to feel horrible and I'll physically survive. And they have to choose that. And so this is the third dimensional problem. Our third dimensional brain and body, again, it's even more addictive than addiction to alcohol or drugs. It's beyond that. It's because we are three-dimensional beings. Our physical body are three-dimensional beings. Our identities are three-dimensional identities. And so unless we are willing to go through the death, the psychological death, the spiritual death to what we believe we are, if we're, if, unless we're willing to do that, there's no, nothing's going to change. This is why, you know, you can, you can, this happens quite often, by the way, where higher dimensional beings will present themselves to people. And you can have two people standing right next to each other, and one person will see an orb, or they might see a, 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 a figure, they might see something, and even, even communicate with it. And the person next to them will see and hear nothing. Because their three-dimensional program is so intact and their, their attachment to the third dimension belief that third dimension is what's giving them 
life is so powerful that it literally blocks out anything beyond the third dimension. Whereas the other person, there has to be some willingness to go beyond their three-dimensional awareness and in order to be able to see it. Now, there's, one, there's another thing that's going on here which makes this even more challenging for those of us in the third dimension, which is that three three-dimensional awareness. Uh, sorry, I got distracted here. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Anyway, I'll just have to, hopefully, hopefully it'll come back to me. I can't remember what I was saying. But the point here is that in order to shift out of the third dimension, we must be willing to accept that we are in fact trapped in um, being completely hypnotized and that we don't have the ability. Even the intellectual awareness that I'm trapped in the third dimension is not enough. So since if you're willing to accept that, if you're willing to accept that you are powerless over this three-dimensional illusion and no amount of study, no amount of contemplation, no amount of anything you could do in the third dimension will ever take that away because it'll just reflect back on itself. When you come to that awareness and you know that unless something from a higher dimension intervenes, it is impossible for you to evolve beyond the third dimension. Until you know that, um, you won't be willing to do the work. So step one is you are admitting complete defeat over the three-dimensional illusion. And it doesn't matter to me whether or not you see it the way I do, which is that, you know, this is something that is just simply part of, you know, being a human being. Human beings are designed to function within a certain frequency, and so it's been built and wired into them to function that way and to believe that that's what reality is. And again, the three-dimensional mind will go out of its way to deny anything beyond it, which is why human beings... You know, religion, science, academics, and the average person walking down the street cannot even believe in a higher dimensional reality. If they do believe in things like extraterrestrials, they won't be able to even conceptualize them outside of the third dimension, which is why uh, people believe in that aliens are three-dimensional beings that abduct you and experiment on you and are incapable of viewing them outside of that. Of course, my belief, uh, I'm quite certain, is that the aliens that do abduct and experiment on you are in fact humans using human technology and all kinds of uh, techniques to brainwash you and things like that. So, uh, without get, getting off topic, you get where I'm going with this. Step one, you admit to yourself that you are powerless over the 3D illusion and that there is nothing within your 3D toolbox that will give you the ability to overcome the higher dimensions. So that's step one. We'll leave it at that, and then we start working on the other steps. Um, you know, since this is something I've just started and since this is not designed for necessarily for people who've been traumatized like alcoholics and drug addicts and people like that who have some kind of, you know, either childhood trauma or they've got some kind of chemical or neurological oddity within them that has traumatized them as well. Since I'm not focusing on that, um, you know, we'll have to see where this goes. Normally... 12 steps won't work without a sponsor. Having said that, you know, the guys who started it didn't have anybody to teach them and they started on their own. So um, if you're able to follow, it is my, let me just back up here and let me give you some prerequisites. The prerequisites are that in my experience, if you want to really start interacting with higher dimensions, which I do on a daily basis now, if, you're, uh, if that's something that you want, then you've got to clean up 
your your toolbox here. So what we're talking about in the 12 steps is cleaning up your psyche and connecting you energetically and spiritually to a higher dimension. But it's going to be challenging to do that if you're, you know, indulging in other addictions, alcohol, cigarettes, nicotine, drugs, uh, you know, things like that. So clean up your physical body. If you are somebody, let's say, who smokes weed on a daily basis and you can't stop, great. Go work Marijuana Anonymous. If you're somebody who drinks, go to Alcoholics Anonymous. If you're um, somebody who comes from an alcoholic family, you can benefit greatly from Al-Anon, Adult Children of Alcoholics, um, Codependence Anonymous. Those are great places to go um, so that you can clean up those kinds of things. If you don't suffer from any of those things, then uh, just clean your physical body up, clean up your diet. And as I said, get rid of any intoxicants, get rid of any mind altering chemicals and um, then uh, start working these. And uh, we'll see where this goes. Again, we'll see if it's necessary to have a sponsor or not. I. You know, I've never seen anybody, I'm just telling you, I've never seen anybody uh, make any real progress spiritually alone. I've never seen it. And so um, I don't recommend it. I think it's uh, narcissism. I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an exercise in ego because, again, you know, you can't shift out of the third dimension with three-dimensional tools. So you can't educate yourself if you have an uneducated mind. You only learn when somebody who's been where you are has transcended beyond that and can understand where you are and then tell you what to do. How they, you have to do what they did. That's just the way it's always worked. So um, it's good to find somebody if this turns into a, something and takes off then uh, whoever, you know, does this and does it successfully, turn around and start sponsoring others. So we'll see where this goes. But for now, that's the end of step one. Admitting we are powerless over the 3D illusion, deciding to awaken from the dream of limitation. And again, this is the 12 steps to transcend to 5D, the most successful method for transcending addiction to the three-dimensional hypnosis prison. That's it for me. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'll be back soon, I'm sure, with the live stream. Um, and we'll just take it from, from there. We'll see what happens. All right. Take care of yourself. Talk to you soon.